Hi and welcome back to another episode, and today the used car conveyor belt has brought us a mini convertible. This particular car is 14 years old and has sat around for about 6 months, and as we can see on the screen the roof's going to need some attention, it's a little bit of mould inside, and it's just genuinely quite grubby. Other areas like the petrol flap, the engine bay, the door shuts and even the wheels are going to need a little bit of attention today to get this car looking its best for resale. The inside of the car is not horrific, it's mainly the carpet area that's going to need a deep scrub and clean and things like the switch gear. Because obviously it's a convertible and the roof's been down, it's been driven down the road, you get a sort of very fine layer of dust over all the internal plastics and all the sort of hard to reach areas. So we'll start with the engine bay today. I'm going to point to a couple of areas we've got to be a bit careful with. So first of all is the coil pack and the HT leads. Secondly, there's an ABS unit down the back there, and there's also an alternator at the front. So I'm going to cover these up with some microfiber towels, which will absorb any overspray from the jet wash and protect them from getting too wet. Then I'll give the engine bay a thorough coating in all-purpose cleaner before agitating it with a soft brush just to remove the dirt from the surface before applying a jet wash and rinsing off the dirt and the all-purpose cleaner. So I get asked quite a bit about engine bays being washed and this is really common practice within the motor trade. As we're going to see, I've got a jet wash where you can adjust the pressure down. I'm going to put in its lowest setting to clean the engine bay, the door shuts and also the roof on this vehicle. And it's really probably no more velocity or power than a garden hose but with considerably less water. The safest option regarding cleaning an engine bay is simply not to. There's always going to be an element of risk whether you use a steam cleaner a jet wash or even if you do it by hand it's always going to be a degree of there's an element of risk there but as we can see on the screen the microfibers are almost bone dry there's a little bit of surface water there and they have done a very good job at protecting HT lead and coils which is almost bone dry I'll now use the same process just to go around things like this fuel flap the door shuts which I'm not going to show on camera because it's just repeating the same process before we actually move on to the roof. Now with regarding the roof it's only ever going to be an improvement. It's a 14 year old vehicle and there's a little bit of wear on this roof as well so we've got to be a bit cautious. So I'm using here a chemical guys drill brush um, by hand it's extremely soft but as we're about to see on screen it's really good at doing circular motions to start off with just to agitate the roof and get the majority of the green algae and dirt and grime that's sort of got into that fabric over the years. And then I'm going to use the jet wash to rinse it off. Again, the jet wash is on setting one, it's extremely low pressure. And it, all it's doing is just pushing the surface all purpose cleaner and dirt off before we give it another deep scrub. So for the second more thorough deep scrub, I'm going to use this little nail brush. And the idea here is that any of these roofs have a pattern in the fabric and you need to go along the pattern to help clean out the green mold and dust and dirt and things inside that groove and across it from left to right. That will give you a nice clean appearance. And interestingly as well, because the roof's obviously in different sections, so the side panel, the roof, round by the rear window, you'll find the pattern in the material change angles. So it's always important to look at that and make sure you're covering it so you're getting all that dirt out of it. Once I've got the roof to a standard I know my customer's gonna be happy with, I've given the body a shampoo and then I've dried the vehicle and brought it inside to the workshop. It was at this point I had to show you the air freshener because it's having an identity crisis. It can't work out if it's gonna be an Apple product or a Ferrari.
I must confess one of the biggest bonuses of cleaning your convertible is by having the roof down. It's a lot easier to film as well because there's so much light coming inside the vehicle and you can get the best camera angles. So all I'm doing here is using a very soft detail brush just to go around the inside and remove any sort of dust and debris from the surface. I've also used a little bit of foam cleaner just around the switch gear on the center console just because I don't want to get that too wet later on with small purpose cleaner and the foam cleaner is just going to do a really good job of loosening off some of that grime to start with. and introducing the skank tank. So this is all the filthy water, just purely from the passenger side of the vehicle, from all the plastic door handles and interior trim. We'll also see here that I'm gonna give the seat belts a thorough wipe over. And also on camera, what I tend to do is once they've been cleaned, is stretch them out as much as I can, maybe wrap them around the headrest, and leave them to air dry. So this steering wheel was an empire of filth. It had some mold growing on the top of it and there was a lot of congealed makeup from over the years which had got itself into sort of between the leather stitching which we'll see I use a nail brush to loosen off. Just around the center badge and also the horn switches again it was just sort of really dusty and caked on dead skin and makeup and just general scuzz. As I've mentioned in previous episodes, for me, the easiest way to clean all the interior plastics, I'm going to use Built Hamber Surfix HD, all-purpose cleaner. And I like to use the method where you spray it onto either the brush or directly onto the cloth, usually a damp microfiber, and then just rub it over the surface to remove the dust and filth. And then what I'll do is periodically flush that microfiber out in a bucket of warm water just to keep it nice and clean. And therefore, when you're cleaning the surface, you're removing all the all-purpose cleaner and dirt and grime and leaving it completely clean and cleansed, ready for an interior dressing. So with the interior plastic trims all thoroughly scrubbed and cleaned, we can now move our attention to the seats. So I've pre-treated these seats with the same all-purpose cleaner agitated it with a drill brush and now I'm going to use a Karchapuzi 110 wet extractor on the seats. The internal water tank on the Karcher has just got warm water and a small amount of a product called Bio Blue that's got antifungal and bacterial killing agents inside it just to make sure that any sort of mold that's in the seat will be killed off so it won't come back in the future. So by far the worst part of this car was the rear carpets. Both sides were equally as bad as each other. And the level of dirt, which I can only be assumed has been trodden in uh, over the years where people have got in and out the back of it, was phenomenal. It really was thick congealed mud inside these rear carpets. So these rear carpets needed a number of passes to make sure that all the dirt was removed. We'll see towards the end of this section that I switched down to the same crevice tool I use on the vacuum cleaner. It's just easier to get in towards the sort of tighter spots, for example, around the seat rails and maybe around where that seat belt buckle is where you just can't get this wider vacuum cleaner attachment into.
and it's back to the tank. So this is all the carpet and seat goop from the passenger side of the vehicle. As we can see, it's really quite dark and disgusting. And we'll now go over to the rear carpets on the driver's side. I've also cleaned the rear seats in this vehicle, but if I'm completely honest, there's nothing exciting enough to show on camera filth wise. There was a little bit of contamination in them, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad as these carpets. So this is more like the highlights as such. So with the base of the driver's seat complete, we can move off to the skank tank for the final time. So all that filth inside the bucket is purely from the driver's side seats and carpet. And when we realize that that box has an 80 litre capacity and we've used about 50 litres of clean water, you realize just how much filth was inside that little car. And once the plastics inside the car are fully dried, I'm going to go around with some Aerospace 303 on a little microfiber pad just to rub it into the trim. I'll also use a small detail swab as well just to go around the more intricate areas like the air vents and that center console. I'll also use a nice clean soft blue microfiber towel just to wipe any residue off so it leaves a nice satin finish on the dashboard and also gives it some UV protection. And with the engine bay dry, we could look to finish this job off as well. So I'm just using a damp microfiber cloth to go around the areas that we covered up earlier, so not to get too much water on there. I'm then going to use some Car Pro Pearl. I've diluted that uh, one to three of water. I'm going to spray that onto the surface and again use a little microfiber mitt just to rub it into the trim. I use another separate microfiber towel just to wipe any residue off. And some of the harder to reach areas like some of the pipe work, I might just use a little non-silicon spray aerosol just to go around there and get them covered so it's got a nice uniform finish. Once the bonnet's closed, it covers up part of this front bumper. So while it's open, I'm going to take the opportunity to use this Rupes Hybrid Nano Polisher just to do this top edge of the bumper, just when the bonnet's closed, it's not something I've got to open up again and do later on. So usually on this level of clean, I would be removing the wheels. But when this vehicle was delivered by the most trader, he and I both noticed something. So this car's got a matching set of directional tires, but unfortunately, when somebody's put them on, they've put two on the wrong axles, so they're pointing in the wrong direction. So I'm going to need to jack the car up and remove the two wheels and swap them over to the opposite side so they all go in the right direction. Another thing we noticed on delivery was the motor trader tried to remove one of the locking wheel bolts to make sure they would come out because sometimes they can be a little bit tricky and that particular bolt was extremely tight and also been cross threaded. So I was a little bit dubious about what the rest were going to be like on removal and unfortunately yes a number of them had been cross threaded as well. Now personally I always loosen off the wheel bolts with a breaker bar on the floor prior to using an impact gun. But anybody in the motor trade as a mechanic or even a tire fitter knows when you put the impact gun on you remove the wheels there's this awful audible tone and you already know the wheel bolts have been cross threaded just by the noise. And this is what they look like so it's a combination of reasons why this might have happened. First of all 
The person who installed them didn't wind them in by hand first of all to make sure that they were seated correctly. And also the threads were absolutely full of dirt and debris and corrosion. And if those had been cleaned out with the wire brush fully, it's something that might have prevented that from happening. So with the wheel removed, I can give the arch liners a real good deep clean and also it gives me time to paint the brake caliper later on. I won't show this on camera because I've done it in a number of previous episodes. But something a lot of people don't know is that the older vehicles, the rears of the wheels were left in grey primer and they're not actually painted silver. They only actually painted the front of the wheel. Nowadays, majority of wheels are powder coated so the entire wheel is covered and it does give better uh, protection long term against corrosion. So sometimes I don't bother masking up the back of the wheels when I'm painting them and I don't clean them on the videos and that would be purely because these rears or the barrel of the wheels had so much corrosion over the years that the primers flaked off and it's just not worth bothering to do anything with it. So with the wheels off it's a great opportunity to use this miniature polisher and restore some gloss to the otherwise rather flat paint on these alloy wheels. Also after that I'm going to go around with a little detailing swab and some silver paint and although it's not ideal and it's not the perfect fix, I can touch in some of the curbing and improve the appearance of this wheel. Now don't get me wrong, if you want a proper lovely looking finish, the wheels need refurbishing, but we class this in the motor trade as a five footer. In other words, from five foot it looks absolutely fine. Yes, if you look close up, it's going to be a little bit curved and edgy. And it goes without saying for as a safety aspect that this vehicle was collected by a recovery truck because luckily the trader who owns it has one. It went straight to the mechanics where it had a brand new set of wheel bolts and any of the damaged threads replaced. So I'm going to mask up any areas that I don't want the compound or the machine polisher to touch because these minis have these large plastic overriders on the wheel arches. Just going to use some regular masking tape for that. Then I'm going to go over with some uh, clay lube and a clay bar just to remove any bonded contaminants off the surface and give me a nice smooth finish to start machine polishing on. I'm not going to spend hours showing you machine polishing because it can get a bit tedious but there was this section down here that as we can see has got quite nasty scratches on it maybe it's gone up against a bush or something and this is an area we can really improve and make a difference on and obviously I've switched to a larger cordless uh, gel action polisher and as we can see on camera you might have to go over this area three or four times to get a decent amount of defect removal and restore the gloss and appearance to this panel So I've used Koshkemi one cut and finish on this vehicle, which has a paint sealant already in it, which is great. But I'm going to go over the top of that with some P&S bead maker, just going to give it a little bit of extra protection and give it a bit of a deeper shine as well. Once that's done, I can look to dress the bumpers and around the wheel arches. And also go into the door shut as well, because a little bit of trim goes inside there. I can then lower the car down for the final time and start to go around and clean the glass. And that will be the final touch before we take the vehicle outside and do our reveal. So now we're at the end of our little mini adventure and as we can see in the after shots the sides of the car have got some really nice deep gloss and reflections back in there. As we start to do a before and after of what the panel used to look like before, now we can see that it's a big improvement. It's not perfect, there are a few marks in there but it's a lot better than it was. 
I will point to something on the edge of the door. It's a very fine line there. And that's where it's had one of those sort of slide on door protectors. And we can see how badly they damage the lacquer over a period of time. So apologies for the continuity being a little bit out on this video at the end. It's purely because I took the car outside for the reveal and halfway through the skies opened up and it just poured with rain. So I had to refilm some of it back inside the workshop. Luckily enough, I was able to get some aftershots to the roof though before it started to rain. And it's a monumental improvement. Now don't get me wrong, it's not perfect, it's far from that. And towards the leading edge of the uh, roof, towards the front of the car, the bonnet, there is some ingrained tree sap that would take quite a lot of time to remove. And due to the budget, sometimes it's just not viable to spend that extra time fixated on one particular area. Most of these motor traders are looking at an overall improvement on the car. So next up we have a mouldy Volkswagen. It's everywhere, all over the seats. Even the exterior's got green slime growing around the wiper blades, the mirror housing, and all the rubber seals down the side of the car. Obviously they've made no effort to clean the car or the alloy wheels, but they've made a really good job at curbing them. So we'll be refurbishing these as well. As always, thank you very much for tuning in and I'll look forward to seeing you very soon with the next video.